Welcome, welcome. I'm the one and only West Coast King, and welcome back to another Major League 90, where over the next two episodes, we're going to be previewing the upcoming MLS season. It's slated to kick off in just a couple of days. March 6th is that magical date. I'm very excited for it. I know you are too. So we're going to be taking a look at where I think each team will place in each of the conferences. Today, we're getting things started with the Eastern Conference. So we're gonna be working our way up, starting at the bottom and ending with a team I think will finish in the first place spot. So starting off with the number 10 spot, I think it's the Chicago Fire. I said a couple of episodes ago, I really like what they were doing. They addressed a couple of spots in defense, brought in a couple of pretty decent players there, addressed a couple of midfield role needs, that, and then brought in a couple of players there. And then they go and sell probably the face of their franchise, Harry Ship, to Montreal. Now, on the face of it, that looks bad. I, I honestly, I don't understand that move at all. Harry Ship is still relatively young. He could have room to grow and could have grown into the face of that franchise, the cornerstone of that franchise for years to come. And if they are rebuilding, that could have been a player that they rebuilt around. I don't understand that move. Now, they may have some idea in mind that they're trying to go for some goal. I don't know what that is. If it ends up working out somehow, it's going to look brilliant. But definitely this season, I don't think there's any way Chicago doesn't finish in last place. Finishing just ahead of them, I think it's going to be New York City FC. There's something about that team. For me, it's, it just doesn't work. There's something wrong with that team. I, I don't know how they're going to get all of that to come together. They have some players that are well past their prime in Pirlo and Lampard. I don't think David Villa has enough in him to carry that team either. They do have a couple of younger players that may well grow into decent players at some point. Are they going to do that in time to be able to help that team this season? Maybe, but probably not. And then they also have the added wrinkle of bringing in a new coach in Patrick Vieira. And while he was a great player, he's rather unproven as a coach. And there's also the history of foreign coaches not doing well in the MLS. So I just think the odds are stacked against them this season. I don't know if they'll finish any higher than ninth. I don't think they'll finish below Chicago, if that's any consolation. But any higher than maybe 8th or ninth, I don't think is in the cards for them. There's just so many weird things going with that team. There's just too many unanswered questions. I, I don't know how they're going to do it this season. Coming in in the number 8 spot, I'm picking the Philadelphia Union. And I actually really do like what they're doing with this team. I can see the road that they're trying to head down. Unfortunately, it's a rather long road, and I just don't think they will come together for them this season. I like a couple of the moves they made, uh, especially drafting Fabian Herbers in the Super Draft. I think he's going to be a great player for them at some point in the midfield. But like I said, just it's not quite there yet. I do like that they have a lot of young players that could potentially help that team at some point in the future, as well as some veteran players that can help them sustain right now. I just I, it's not there yet, but maybe next season they can make a playoff push. This year, I think they'll fall just short coming in at the number eight spot. So these next three spots, number seven through five, honestly, these three teams could finish anywhere in there. For the number seven spot, I'm going to go with DC United. Um, they were the only playoff team last year to finish with a negative goal differential. And this season, to start things off with, they're going to have to be without their goalkeeper, Bill Hameen, for like the first half of the year. With a, He's out with, a, I think, a knee injury. So... I don't think that's going to help that situation at all. And they're also dealing with the loss of Perry Kitchen after they decided not to renew his contract. I have no idea how they're going to fill that void. So they have a couple of very huge questions to start this season off with. How they address those is going to be key to this year. They could start off and maintain at least some playoff hopes until Hamid comes back and then make a late push. It could happen or the thing could completely fall apart and they finish 7th, 8th, ninth, maybe. I don't know. So that team is very much up in the air. In the number 6 spot, nabbing the last playoff spot I think will be the New England Revolution. They're going to have to deal with the loss of Jermaine Jones. They decided not to bring him back. And they've tried their best to kind of fill that void left by Jones. They brought in a new designated player. He ended up getting hurt right away. He's going to miss like the first half of the season. They brought in another player to fill that void. We'll see how he does. I just don't know. Uh, they're, they're a team that has a lot of questions as well. They're one year removed from making the MLS Cup Finals. They did lose that to the LA Galaxy, but they're still a very talented team. They've got some very good talent there. Fagundes, Lee Win, obviously. So they've got some pieces there, but do they have enough to make a serious push? Probably not, but maybe enough to make the playoffs. And coming in at the number five spot, jumping up two spots from last season, I believe it's going to be Orlando City SC. I've said time and time again, 
I love the way they're building that team down there in Florida. They had Kyle Lahren last year with a breakout season. If he can come somewhere close to that again this year, I think they're going to be set in the striking position. Also, they still have Kaká, and they brought in Noserino from AC Milan to shore up that midfield. It's going to be the players they put around them that's really going to decide where they'll finish this year. Can the younger players such as uh, Christian Huguita and Harrison Heath continue to grow and add to that team it's yet to be determined but i think they're gonna be a playoff contender this year maybe they can finish as high as third i didn't want to go that far with them fifth place i think would be a solid finish for them this year in only their second season the team i'm picking in the number four spot is an absolute wild card i'm gonna go with montreal here at number four last year they had a slow start to the season due in part to their Concacaf champions league run they turned it on late, coinciding with the addition of Didier Drogba, and they ended up making a very strong playoff push. Now, can they repeat that performance with largely the same team? Maybe. Maybe. And I say that because they also brought in Harry Ship, which adds to that team. But honestly, I have got to question whether or not Didier Drogba is even going to be there by the time the end of the season comes. If he doesn't leave in the summer to head back to Chelsea in some kind of a coaching capacity, I know it's already been rumored that he that they, they offered him that spot and he wants to go there. If that doesn't happen, I'd be surprised. So if they can hold on to Didier Drogba and he remains committed to that team for the full season, they could make another strong playoff push. If he leaves, though, that team could fall apart and it could fall apart in a bad way. So... Like I said, it's a wild card. I'm going to pick them to finish fourth for now. We'll see how that story of Montreal plays out, though. Coming in at the number three spot is actually the team that won the Supporter Shield last year, the New York Red Bulls. They finished seven points clear of second place in the Eastern Conference last season. And I don't know if anyone really saw that coming. They had a bit of a tumultuous offseason going into last year. There was a town hall meeting. A lot of questions were raised. And in the end... Jesse Marsh brought that team together, and they were absolutely fantastic. Now, they've lost a couple of players, especially, namely, Matt Miazga off to Chelsea. I think they'll slip a little bit due to those losses, but I like the leadership on that team. I like the front office, the coaching staff, and the overall veteran presence that that team has. I think they're going to be okay. A third-place finish would be fine for them. I think they'll have another strong playoff showing they very well could make it out of the Eastern Conference and into the MLS Cup Finals. That's yet to be seen, though. That, that could be a bit of a stretch for this team, but I still think they're going to be a very, very good squad. In the number two spot is going to be the team making the largest jump in the Eastern Conference for me. It's going to be Toronto. They, they Time and time again, it looks like Toronto is going to be a very good team, and they always seem to fall apart. I don't know what it is about them, but I'm going to pick them to finally come together this season. That team, undeniably is one of the best teams on paper in the MLS. They could score goals with anybody last year. Giovinco obviously was fantastic. Josie Altador contributed every once in a while, a bit inconsistent. I'm going to pick him to have a huge breakout season, by the way. And the main problem they had last year was their defense. They let up goals like mad. It was it was bad. They were one of, tied for the worst defensive team in the Eastern Conference, allowing 58 goals. This year, they've addressed that. They went out and got Will Johnson from Portland, a great defensive midfielder. They also went out and got a couple of central defenders. I think they're going to be much, much better in defense. Combine that with the attack they had last season, and they're definitely going to be a very good team. I don't think there's any way they don't at least finish in the top four. I'm going to pick them in the number two spot. And now we are down to the number one spot, and it's going to be the reigning Eastern Conference champions. The team that represented the Eastern Conference in the MLS Cup last year, though they had a very bland performance in that MLS Cup final against Portland. But I'm going to pick Columbus nonetheless. They have a great team in Columbus, and what's even scarier is that it's a young team. They're only going to get better. I have no idea how scary that team is going to be this year, but it could be a great team. Kamara was great for them last year. If he can continue that kind of form, score goals up top for them. They've got young prospects all over the pitch. Like I said, only going to get better. I think they're they're set for a very good run this year. I'm picking them to win the Eastern Conference. They could be a supporter shield challenger as well. I just think they're probably the best team in the East. They have the least questions coming into this season. And I think they're set to absolutely blow away the Eastern Conference. I'm going to pick them to win it by as much as seven points, much like New York did last year. I just think they're the most complete team at this time. And I don't know if there's anyone in the Eastern Conference right now that can challenge them. 
So that is going to do it for my predictions for the Eastern Conference for the upcoming MLS season. As always, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Where do you think some of these teams will finish? And do you agree or disagree with some of my picks? I know some of the picks are not going to go over all that well. New England falling out of the playoffs is probably a very unpopular pick. And picking Orlando to finish as high as I did is probably a bit you know, unexpected and probably a bit of a gutsy call. But like I said, I do like what they're doing in Orlando. Next time out, we're going to take a look at the Western Conference and talk about some unanswered questions there. Can Portland repeat? Can the team in LA come together with one of the most talented lineups ever assembled in the MLS and dominate the league? And can Seattle rebound from what was a disappointing season last year despite the fact they've lost Obafemi Martins, but they've added Jordan Morris. So that's going to do it for this one. If you had as much fun as I did, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. I will see you when we come back with some more Major League 90. See ya.